to Ito postponed that session so jury selection could continue. He was head coach of the New York Jets from 1983 to 89. Fans soured on him. They started chanting, Joe must go. Two years after that in Pittsburgh as offensive coordinator, players and fans thought his offense was too complicated to follow and execute. Joe Walton then left the pro game. He moved back home to Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh, and he was hired to put a college program together at nearby Robert Morris. His team is new, but some of his players even remember the NFL exploits of Joe Walton. Now, I want you to look me right in the eye and don't lie to me. Did you ever say, where's the old Joe? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I said it a couple times, but uh, I don't say it anymore. Come on, let's go move it. Say the name Joe Walton most anywhere in western Pennsylvania, and folks will know who you're talking about. But not so with Robert Morris. Bring out. Bring out. Who is Robert Morris? Excuse me? Who was Robert Morris? Who is Robert Morris? Who was Robert Morris? Who was the man Robert Morris? Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't tell you. Who's Robert Morris? We're a team to be reckoned with. That's who we are. Oh, who was Robert Morris? Who was Robert Morris? Uh, I don't know. Who was Robert Morris? The financier of the American Revolution. Yes! Yes! You just went a trip to Hawaii. <laughs> just kidding. Come on, Dee! Come on, Dee! Even the coach himself had to check the history books, or at least the school program, to find out who Robert Morris was. But that's nothing compared to what he crammed into a late-night study session. The first thing uh, I had to learn was about budget. It's starting to get some nicks and scratches in it, and uh, mm -hmm. you start to worry about... Uh, Take care of that thing! Yeah, how, many, <laughs> how, many more new, how many more new ones are we going to have to buy next year? Is this the old soccer team locker room? No, or? no, no, no. This was an indoor swimming pool. This is an indoor swimming pool? It was an indoor swimming pool. Rowan, first year program, you probably expect a three-ring circus, right? Check this out. First name? Conte. First name? Pianta. First name? Dante. So, is Coach Walton up to kicking game? Yeah. All right, let's go slot flank right. You're going to outside release and then get out there on your five pass. Let's go. Are his plays complicated? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. One of the things I've, I've always done a lot of is, is what we call a, a waggle. Waggle right 71. You waggle and set out here, and, and we'll throw a, a stop route. There you go. That's it. That's the way it should look. Right there. Go! Does he have a curfew? Yeah, uh, Friday night, we have an 11 o'clock bed check for the game. Does he ever come banging on your door, making sure you're in bed? Yes, he does that, too, and he calls everybody in, in our room. Has he ever said. called you? Yeah. And what, do you, what does he say when you answer the phone? Uh, it's good to hear your voice. Uh, get some sleep and get ready for the game. <laughs> Click. He built the locker room, went out and got the players, he even designed the team's helmets. But what Joe Walton wants now is the home field advantage. The Colonials currently play their home games here at a local high school just down the street from campus. I really believe that uh, the school deserves uh, to have a good stadium and the players deserve to have their own stadium and the main thing is to find the money. It's a good job! It's a good job! Here we go! I enjoy this. I enjoy being with the kids. Uh, I enjoy coaching them. Uh, I enjoy their enthusiasm. Uh, the people at the college have been, uh, you know, tremendously supportive. It's a good feeling to be a part of this. Robert Morris won its first five games before losing for the first time last week to Wagner. They're off this Saturday before they travel to St. Francis of Pennsylvania on the 29th. Walton, just one of the latest NFL head honchos who would rather teach scholar-athletes than coach the pros. Bill Walsh and John Robinson had a taste of college, went to the pros only to go back to their old schools. Walsh at Stanford, Robinson at USC. Dan Henning started with the Falcons, then the Chargers. Now he's at BC, so I guess if he goes full circle, he'll end up back with the Falcons. Interestingly, all three coaches had better records in college than they did the pros, all three except Bill Walsh. You know, Stuart, we could live 100 lifetimes, and there'd be no way that most of us would understand what it's like to grow up in the inner city and dream of what it's like one day to get out. For many of the young people who call the projects their home, the one way out is basketball. Yeah, Tony, the stories are endless. The young kid who can handle the rock like a pro gets the scholarship and then gets busy in college. We've also heard the converse story. The jump shot was there, so was the scholarship, but fate and maybe bad luck played on the other team and the dream evaporated. Whatever the case, all we ever see is the end, the glory or the heartbreak. Now, though, for the first time, we get the whole story. Three filmmakers, Peter Gilbert, Steve James, and Frederick Marks, spent five years working on a documentary film called Hoop Dreams.
Yeah, this is an amazing story of the lives of two young men from Chicago. Arthur Agee and William Gates, a story so riveting that Spike Lee was hired to produce a TV movie based on their lives. It's a story so personal that Doc Rivers of the New York Knicks, himself a Chicago native, felt compelled to lend a hand and assist, if you will, for Hoop Dreams.